everyone. Guess what? If you didn't buy your book on Amazon, we are starting Boundaries. It's a, it's a goodie. It's an oldie. They revamped it. I read this like probably 20 years ago and I wish I would have read it in between, <laughs> but it's so, so good. So this is what the survey said. This was at least 50% of you. So we're starting chapter one today and we're gonna do cover the intro about the life of Sherry and talk about it a little bit. And what we're gonna cover in this book is the biblical view of boundaries, what mm -hmm. they are, what they protect, how we can develop them, how we can be injured, how we repair, and how we implement boundaries, which is well, a life lesson, it's really a life journey. So today, uh, you wanna start Kind of recapping what Sherry was dealing with. Her yeah. Example in chapter one was a woman named Sherry. Was Sherry. And she wasn't really that great at centering boundaries, but she's a really good person. Mm -hmm. so, well, the chapter is called A Day in a Boundaryless mm -hmm. Life. So, oh. and then also, side note, if you need a book, I have copies, so get a hold of me. And we encourage you to get your quick shipping on Amazon and join us. There are a lot of chapters. We might zip through some of them more quickly and others less quickly, mm -hmm. and we might not get through them all, but it's really important work and what Kayla and I were just talking we we're like this is a really good follow-up to the emotional healthy uh, book we were just reading because part it's, of being emotionally healthy is setting is setting boundaries. good boundaries yeah. so it's like next level next le we're like, going next level yeah level yeah. up <laughs> yeah, level up. Okay. Okay. okay so Sherry oh Sherry poor I oh, Sherry <laughs> If you read chapter one, you understand why, oh, Sherry. Oh, Sherry. Uh, so there's a lot. She had a lot of uh, boundaryless issues, and I just wanted to pick up a couple of them. Um, one was with her mother and not setting a boundary with her and um, kind of stealing her time. She allowed her mom to rob her time. Yes. From her. And guilt and her And guilt about her it. about it. And make her feel bad for wanting to finish her child's costume. Yeah, and that happens sometimes with family members. It's because difficult. Because we, especially our parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll, we're, we're not going to go too heavy into that. But, no, um, we're just going to kind of summarize a little bit. Uh, the second one, which really stuck out to me, um, was Sherry's friend, Mm -hmm. Lois that she's known since grade school that had a tendency of, of powering through the conversation and making everything about her own self and not checking in with um, Sherry oh, at we, all. I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure every single one of us has a friend like that. Yeah. And the question is how have we been honest with them about hijacking conversations or making it one-sided? Mm -hmm. Um, I just did, I did that once. I was telling Kayla too, uh, with a friend, I said, hey, you know, this is what's been going on. And she said, she didn't talk to me for about two weeks and she was mad about it. Yeah. But um, if you feel yourself being drained or you're always listening and they're never asking you any questions, then it might be a good time to evaluate the friendship and ask, and we'll get more into this in the book, but, um, is this someone that is kind of going more into the ministry aspect of my life because it's not reciprocal and it's yeah. one-sided. So the book will cover more of that later. It could also be convicting to yourself like, oh, I do that. Oh, am I a good active listener? Am I a good active listener? Am so, I asked, do I ask good questions? Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like calling us higher to yeah. not only set boundaries with people in our lives, but calling us to higher places to yes. be better listeners and, yeah. and see the person in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing she, that really stuck out to me personally was with her kid and setting boundaries with her child and parenting and, and that, and that can get really messy mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's really hard to do. And with each child, it's different. It is because so different personality. So you're wheel with each one mm -hmm. and that's it presents its own challenge. Right. Yeah. And, there's a chapter on that too, I think. So there, she struggles. There was a lot of other mm -hmm. stuff, a lot of other situations, but those were the big ones that popped out to me personally. Yeah, and there's marriage and church and different things. Uh -huh. And there's work and, yeah. and all the different areas. But yeah, on page 26, it says, trying harder didn't work for Sherry. She spent lots of energy um, trying to have a successful meeting life. She wasn't lazy, but mm -hmm. trying harder didn't help. 
Secondly, being nice out of fear didn't work either. She was people pleasing. And then thirdly, taking responsibilities for others didn't work either. So Sherry suffered from severe difficulty in taking ownership of her life. Part of taking responsibility ownership is knowing what is our job and what is not. Mm -hmm. And she had kind of the inability to say no, which I know a lot of you are good at deciding when to say no, maybe when to say yes, but sometimes it's like how we do it, right? I also noticed that she tried to justify her ability to not say no by like making it look good. Like she tried to dress it up and make yeah. excuses for not having healthy boundaries. Or some, or she would kind of over-spiritualize it, which mm -hmm. I think is what's so nice that this is a biblically-based book because she's like, well, if I was a good Christian, I would do this. Or this is serving, and she would kind of guilt herself with scripture. Um, so any confusion of responsibility and ownership in our lives is a problem of boundaries. Yeah. We need to set mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual boundaries for our lives to help us distinguish what is our responsibility and what isn't. As we see in Sherry's struggles, the inability to set appropriate boundaries at appropriate times with appropriate people can be very destructive. Do you want to touch on this list real quick? That, yeah. That the book's going to cover. So, um, with the, for the first one, it says... Uh, well, just back up real quick. It says the sentence, when we are confronted with our lack of boundaries, they raise good questions. And mm -hmm. these are the questions. Mm -hmm. So can we set limits and still be a loving person? Yes. Okay. What are legitimate boundaries? Mm, mm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. I can answer the first one confidently. Second one, not so much. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> it's, it's we're going to learn how to, what's legitimate and right. what's not. Uh, the third one, what if someone is upset or hurt by my boundaries? Yeah, I you, struggle with that. Yep. Yeah. And I was a really good classic codependent and I was usually concerned about other people's with other people's feelings. I was kind of raised that way. My mom was also codependent and I was thinking I had gotten to the place where I can physically and verbally say, I am not responsible for mm -hmm. their feelings. Even though they might be mad, I'm not responsible because yeah. just because I set a boundary, I'm not responsible for how they respond. Right. It's not always easy. No, not at all. Um, number four, how do I answer someone who wants my time, love, energy, or money? You pray first, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's, that's for, for sure. Yes, probably yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, number five, why do I feel guilty or afraid when I consider setting boundaries? Oh, that's, this has been probably the one for me that's lingered the longest. I I don't know what it is about the guilt piece. Is, I think it's fear. Mm -hmm. I'm, I can say I don't care how they respond, but there's also sometimes a little fear like, what if they reject me? What if they don't like me? But mm -hmm. I don't know if that's more or it's guilty. I feel guilty like it's wrong sometimes right. that I'm setting the boundary. Like, oh, this is wrong. And I'm still sometimes struggling with right and wrong which might be back to what are legitimate maybe sometimes i'm not sure if it's legitimate or not yeah but we're gonna work on that too so number six how do boundaries relate to mutual submission within marriage Ooh, that's gonna be a doozy that will be a doozy because i have no <laughs> idea <laughs> and number seven aren't boundaries selfish no no i think we've been taught sometimes they are mm -hmm. but they're not so we're well, excited. And when you try to set a boundary with somebody who isn't healthy and they reject the boundary, it can make you feel like your boundary is selfish. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Oh, I'm so excited. We're going to learn a lot. Today. Like Sherry's mom did. Yeah, totally. And we probably can do that too. If you mm -hmm. ever met a boundaryless person who keeps pushing and pushing and pushing you and then you're exhausted and you're drained and you're like, what just happened to me? If you have any of these confusion or you're stressed or you find if you're not bringing out the best in each other, it's a good time to ask. If this person doesn't bring out the best in you, it's a good time to ask if it's healthy and there's some boundaries that are missing. Right. So let's pray. We're super excited. Yeah. We just want to 
we just pray blessings over this study. Lord, we're super excited to learn something new with you mm -hmm. and that it's um, going to point to you and a point to emotional health at the same time. Mm -hmm. And bless the ladies week and may they start digging in and learning more about themselves and about who you are for them. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you for who you are, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Blessings, guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you.